Hey guys, welcome to Core Finance. My name is Alessio. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. That's what everyone talking about. The question I want to ask in this video are actually two questions. Is Bitcoin in a bubble? And if it is in a bubble, then so what? What do we do about it? What patterns can we recognize? So take a look at this chart that I'm looking at here. And uh, wow, look at this. I mean, does that look familiar to you? And it should, especially those of you who remember what happened 17 years ago, right? This is what happened 17 years ago. Uh, if you're old enough to remember, of course, the 2001 dot-com crash. And by the way, let me just say this, that if you're not old enough to remember the dot-com crash, the famous stock market crash, that happened 17 years ago, then you're lucky because that means you're not going to make the same mistakes that hopefully your parents made, that I made, and probably millions of people made that caused them to lose lots of money. So pay attention to this video. Look at this chart and notice, just compare this chart that I'm looking at here with the previous chart. You will see a tremendous rise. In fact, as Bitcoin has risen by uh, over a thousand, nearly thousand percent, uh, from gone from 700 bucks to uh, nearly 8,000 dollars just recently. But as you can as you can see here, about 17 years ago when we had a dot com bubble, that is precisely what happened. Um, let me just say this: There's a famous story by the trader John Carter in his book, and he says that his plumber, yes, his plumber said to him that he was going to quit his day job as a plumber and basically day trade dot-com stocks. And as soon as he heard that news, the first thing that he did, the first thing that John Carter did, was to essentially look for shorting opportunities. In other words, betting against the dot-com market at that time. Very smart move. And let me just show you this. Uh, the key mistake that people made, and I want to make sure you understand this, because the mistakes that people made in previous bubbles in history, like the dot-com bubble, like the house market crash, um, will repeat themselves. These mistakes are still going to be made today, and yes, even the, the Bitcoin bubble. Take a look, because what was happening back then in the, year, in, the, in the late 90s, first of all, a lot of folks were saying that the bubble had ended right over here. Take a look at that where I put my arrow right there. So a lot of folks were saying, okay, so here's where the bubble has ended. They were wrong, because it continued to go higher. Okay, so a lot of folks who were predicting the top in the dot-com bubble were completely wrong on their call. And that was a huge mistake because basically they missed out on the rest of that move higher. So one thing to remember, guys, actually two things to remember is firstly, it is very difficult to try to time the top in a market. It's very difficult to say, well, this is when the bubble is going to end. You cannot do that. It's impossible. As the famous uh, trader Jim Rogers said, uh, the markets can actually go beyond what you can possibly imagine. Number two, as the other trader, Linda Rashke, said in the book Market Wizards, she said that you cannot predict magnitude in a market. You cannot predict how extent, the extent to which a market can move. You can predict direction, but it's imp almost impossible to predict the magnitude. All right, so folks out there who are uh, looking at buying Bitcoin, you may actually, this, this may be good news for you because uh, it, there potentially could be, even though it's in a bubble, yes, I agree it is, um, don't make the same mistake that our parents and many of our, uh, many, many folks made back in the late 2000s, back in the late 90s, when they thought that the bubble had finished here, when actually it continued to rise and double in value. All right, so that's on the Nasdaq.com bubble. Now let's go to the, 1980s. Now, I was 10 years old when this happened in the, in the 1987 uh, famous crash. By the way, let me just say this. If you weren't around in the 1980s, then you really missed out on a fantastic decade because we had the best films and the best music. I mean, uh, I, I can't imagine what, what kind of garbage that people are listening to nowadays in today's generation. Can, can anyone tell me what the hell is Lady Gaga? But seriously, take a look at this. This was the news headlines back in 1987 when the Wall Street uh, stock market basically crashed. The Dow dropped by 500 points. You can see it right there. And take a look at this headline, the yuppies aghast at end of the boom. Uh, by the way, those of you who don't know what yuppies means, then you probably never watched Only Fools and Horses. Yuppies was an 80s term for young folks who were on the up, in other words, climbing the social ladder. These are mostly young men, young white males, who were making tons of money in the, in the city, while most of Britain was essentially getting poorer and poorer. But anyway, the bottom line is that this caused a huge, huge bubble. The market crash, of course, happened in 1987, October 1987. I remember it very well because actually, for those of you who remember, it happened just very close to the hurricane that we had in 1987. Almost all the gains, all the gains of that year wiped out in about a couple of weeks, 20% crash in the market. Again, there were clues. And by the way, in future videos, I'm going to tell you some of the sell strategies, some of the, some of the uh, actual techniques you can use to know when to get out of the market. But in any case, you can see some of the huge, gigantic moves that occurred. Let's go back to the first bubble in history, the first recorded bubble in history, and that was the tulip bubble. All right. 
So can you ever imagine that the price of a tulip, the fl a flower, a flower can actually become more than the price of a house? Yes, guys, back in the year 16, in the 1630s, uh, from 1634, 1637, in the 17th century, the price of a flower, the tulip, skyrocketed, went from almost a 60 guilders from about six guilders. Um, again, remember, the price of this flower became the, almost the price of uh, someone's salary, a whole year's salary, or the price of a house. What happened to that bubble? Ended very badly, as you can imagine. Yes, it crashed and burned. But what the bottom line is that things like this, patterns like this happen all the time. And we need to remember that the bubble in Bitcoin can eventually have, see something like this. Now, in the meantime, I, th I still think there's money to be made here. I'm not saying the bubble has reached its peak just yet, but just be careful is what I'm saying, because remember, risk increases with price. This is the biggest mistake that people make. Um, many folks think that as price rises, that risk falls. Wrong, because any asset, any asset, it doesn't matter whether you think a safe asset like gold uh, or indeed a, a good quality stock like Apple, any asset when it becomes expensive also becomes risky. So remember, risk increases with price, not decreases with price as it goes higher. Remember, it's a very key lesson to understand. So here's the thing. If you think that Bitcoin will never crash, and it won't suffer the same consequences of other bubbles in history, then guess what? You are a pinhead and you're probably, yes, a moron. Because that means you've not learned the lessons of history like I've just mentioned here. So, uh, in fact, take a look at this. Back in the year 2000 and 2001, actually, beg your pardon, in the year, in the 1990s, many folks who were in denial about a bubble, they were saying that dot-com stocks will never crash because they are the new economy. But of course, it did crash. And as you can see, it gave up many folks. By the way, this is very important to understand. Many folks jumped in at the wrong moment, at the peak right here. And these were folks who essentially were fearing and missing out. They were fearing they're going to miss out on a huge money-making opportunity. Because remember, what was happening is their friends and people they knew were saying they were making tons and tons of money, millions, people becoming millionaires in dot-com stocks. And these folks were saying, hey, I don't want to miss out on this. So they jumped in at the worst possible moment. And guess what? That's exactly what's going to happen with Bitcoin. You're going to hear more of your friends making tons and tons of money in Bitcoin. And guess what? That's going to end really badly when that bubble is eventually going to burst. And yes, many folks are going to lose their money when that bubble eventually drops like it did, as you can see right there. Just be careful because, and keep watching this show because we're going to talk about some of the methods we can use to know when to get out of the bubble as well. Now, let's go to the next uh, thing. I want to just share with you some fantastic quotes from one of the best traders and investors of our time. This is Jesse Livermore, who said, profits always take care of themselves, but losses never do. He said, speculation is old as the hills. Whatever happens in the stock market today has happened before and will happen again. I have never forgotten that. So remember, patterns repeat, history repeats. So guys, you need to have an exit strategy. It is not buy and hold. It is buy and homework in the words of Jim Cramer. So the bottom line is, it's not just about knowing when to buy. You also have to know when to sell. Remember, guys, there are two things with wealth. One is to make it. The second is to keep it. Most folks are only, folks, are only focused on knowing how to make it. All right, so most folks are essentially looking into buying Bitcoin. But are they looking into keeping the money they've made, you know, keeping the, 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 the profits? Probably not. So... I'm going to make sure we cover both of this for you as well. So guys, keep watching this channel for more videos and updates. We'll reveal to you some of the exit strategies and also some of the opportunities we can have in Bitcoin and other markets. Uh, please share this video with your friends, on uh, fa family members, on Facebook, wherever it is. And of course, remember to subscribe to our videos. And guys, what do you think? I want to hear your opinions. Please put your comments below this video. My name is Alessio, and thank you very much for watching Core Finance. And you can also check me out on my website, leadingtrader.com. Thanks a lot.